Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course that is Power Plant System Engineering, module number 4 and this title of this module is Hydro and Renewable Energy Power Generation Systems. So, in this uh, module with lecture number 8, our main focus would be energy storage and uh, this lecture in, which is the part 1 of this module we will talk about the two basic units of energy storage systems that is pumped hydro storage systems and compressed air storage systems. So, basically speaking both these storage systems have same philosophy, but only difference lies is there in a pumped hydro systems we have the storage medium is water. Whereas, in compressed air storage systems, your storage medium is air. But before you start, let us try to understand why we require the storage. In our previous sections and modules, we have so seen that renewable energy systems comprises of wind energy, tidal energy, geothermal energy, solar energy and those energies are intermittent in nature. But uh, if you look at the energy demand in terms of electric energy in a utility systems, they vary hourly, daily, monthly, yearly and so on. At the same time, the energy supplied or available for generation of electricity is also intermittent. So, it is very difficult to map when your demand is high or demand is low or when your supply is high and supply is low. So, to counter this effect we require some kind of mechanism in which energy can be stored uh, with a philosophy that when there is a demand the stored energy can be utilized to cater the needs. So, the very basic need of energy storage is applicable for renewable energy systems that is solar, wind, ocean, tidal where output of the plant also fluctuates. So, to address this power intermittency which is a situation where we cannot provide the power based on the demand which is normally the case when the when we have a conventional plants operated with a fossil fuel or a hydropower systems. But to some extent these things can be countered for uh, renewable energy systems with a mechanism of energy storage. So, hence the need of energy storage becomes inevitable for renewable energy systems mainly to counter the fluctuations uh, in demand for electricity for assuring a steady output. So, it operates with a fact that when the demand is lower than the capacity energy has to be so stored, when the demand is higher than the capacity the stored energy can be released. So, through this process we can have supply of electricity in a reliable manner efficiently and in most economical way. So, in a larger sense if you see earth crust where natural energy is available, they are also quantified in the form of fossil fuels or uranium metals and earth also uh, we can say the largest resources of energy. So, to give a some quantification numbers energy available or energy density in terms of with respect to fossil fuels it is falls in the range of 14 to 10 to the power 6 kilojoule per meter cube area. Whereas, from uh, nuclear materials the energy resources can be the order of uh, 10 to the power 14 kilojoule per meter cube. So, we have been using this energy from millions years of existence of human existence. So, but at the outset when you say that current scenario the energy crisis is significant. So, we require a storage medium. So, this is a sample plots that talks about why we require a storage systems. 
first thing the first clause talks about a, a case where uh, energy uh, or power which is available from solar incidence uh, from uh, throughout the uh, day. So, if you look at the supply, supply is very specific but means in the form of solar energy which is available mainly on daytime. And uh, so, we can there is a supply, but demand also varies in a natural way, but in some cases we can see that supply is less, but demand is high. In, and in some cases, if you take the peak value of the supply and take an average line, then we can say that solar energy cannot continuously supply as per the demand. So, the to counter this effect, one uh, another situation that can be plotted in for a power in terms of for a fossil and nuclear power plant, we can say that the uh, nuclear and fossil fuel based power plants, they supply the constant available power throughout this, this thing. They are quite capable of supplying this power as per the need. But when the demand is higher, we cannot, uh, this, these plants cannot be in a position to cater the need for uh, peak demands. So, for that reasons, when there is a continuous uh, uh, generation of power, we can store them and during peak demand period, they can be discharged. So, that is the idea during peak demand, the energy has to be supplied from the storage and during normal situations, uh, it can the fossil fuel power or nuclear power plants, it can cater the base load operation. So, uh, if you look at the energy storage mechanisms, uh, we can say that if you say start with a primary heat source and we want to store it, it can be stored in an electrical storage manner or it can be in a thermal storage manner. So, let us start with this line that electrical storage. So, when you when the conventional plants run at a base load operations and we get the electric power from its generating stations. Sometimes you can these plants can give a base load operation or base load, but at this similar situation we can also have the excess electricity. So, that excess electricity can go to the storage. Now, these storage have the possibilities that we can have electromechanical systems or direct storage and electromechanical systems can be further subdivided in the form of storing in the form of potential energy or in the kinetic energy. Now, looking at the potential energy, it can be stored as a pumped hydro medium or it can be stored as a compressed air medium or it can be stored as a uh, torsion bar, springs and this is what we say potential energy based storage and it falls under electromechanical systems, which is a combination of uh, mechanical and electrical energy. Other part it can be a kinetic energy based systems, where this energy is stored in terms of flywheels. So, typical example of this flywheel normally uh, is that uh, we use uh, in a conventional IC engine based plant or engine. Uh, other kind of things which is a direct storage of electrical energy, it comes in the for, 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 in, uh, for storage batteries and superconducting uh, magnets. Now, if you look at the thermal storage based systems, the load inputs can also go directly for to the power generating stations uh, to provide the base load and uh, the excess heat that can go to thermal uh, storage. So, these storage uh, things can be possible through sensible heating storage, latent heat storage and chemical reaction storage. So, for all the cases, there are two basic important uh, inferences. First, the primary plants run with a base load and excess electricity which is stored energy which is used as a peak load. Now, even in thermal storage also, the primary station runs for base load and the excess heat which is stored in the thermal storage medium, it runs for peak load. And this is how the curve looks like that for a continuous throughout the day, if you want to have a steady power. Uh, so, during normal situations, so anyway we are getting a steady power. So, when the during off peak hours, energy can be stored. Now, during the peak hours, the store energy can be released. So, if you take the average of entire day, so you can say that it is a 
steady state operations. So, this is what I have explained that uh, we have electrical and mechanical storage types and flywheel energy type and uh, batteries superconducting coils. So, in our subsequent uh, discussions we will be talking about uh, mainly on uh, compressed pumped hydro storage, compressed air storage, flywheel storage, then storage in batteries that is in the form of electromechanical storage. Now, uh, moving for to the thermal energy storage systems, we, we will talk about this latent heat storage, uh, sensible heat storage, latent heat storage and chemical reactions. So, we call these schemes as thermal storage schemes in the form of sensible heat, latent heat and chemical reactions. So, uh, the first point or first storage systems uh, of our discussion is a pumped hydro storage systems. Now, we all know that or in our previous models we have discussed not in the previous model, in fact, in our uh, uh, first lecture, first few lectures of this module number 4, we have talked about the hydro power systems, where the power generating unit by converting the potential energy of water and that energy is getting imparted in kinetic energy mode to the turbine rotor. So, that way uh, this is what we say or talk about a large scale plants, but what happened is that uh, now in a pumped hydro storage systems also operate in a similar manner, but main difference because in our previous study it was only the power generating mode, which means that turbine and generator are coupled which is in a hydro power systems, but in a pumped hydro storage medium that means, first we need to store the energy in the form of uh, uh, potential energy uh, and with water, water as a working medium. So, that potential energy can be used to cater need during the peak demand that is the entire idea. So, for that purpose what we require? We require a pumping unit that will pump that will be integrated with a power plant. Uh, when there is a excess power available that excess power can be utilized as a pumping mode to, uh, that means, to pump water from a lower reservoir to a upper reservoir. This is what we talk about a pumping mode and during turbine uh, during uh, discharging mode or during peak demand that same energy can be released uh, which is similar to operation of a hydro power plant and that is called as gen power generating mode. So, we have a pumping mode, we have a power generating mode. So, that way one can say that to store the energy in a pumping mode, we have head available or pumping mode head is H, H is equal to H p minus H L p. Since it is a pumping mode, this is what talks about the losses during flow conditions of pumping. Now, when you uh, on that hydro storage energy runs in a turbine generating mode, so we have uh, mm, the head available in the turbine and head uh, losses during the most operation of turbine mode. So, that losses comes by virtue of the, uh, the uh, length at which the water flows in the pipe and the pipe means it is something like which we call this as a penstock. So, what happens is that during pumping mode we have the height traveled by the water is h and during uh, turbine mode same height is there, but main thing is that here uh, uh, heads are different that means losses during pumping mode and losses during turbine mode can be different. Further turbine may not operate for continuously it is suppose we are doing the pumping mode for 8 hours, but turbine can operate for 2 hours. So, that way the controlling factor of H and H T is different. So, based on this we have different flow rates for Q P for flow rate of water for pumping mode and flow rate of water during turbine mode operation. So, that with other words means that head is converted to power for pumping mode and, and for turbine mode. 
uh, now to make this uh, concept effective we need to can have two reservoir one is upper reservoir or other is lower reservoir now this reservoirs can be uh, naturally generated or it can be artificially generated or you can create some kind of re artificial reservoirs uh, so one case it can be a lake river natural river other things we can uh, uh, we can artificially exhibit some of the reservoir. Now, to make this effective, we have two important things. First is elevation height h, which is defined either for pumping mode and turbine mode. Other is the maximum horizontal distance. So basically, uh, uh, so h is detected by this height and length, which is the actual length in which the water flows in the pipe or pen stock. So, that L by H ratio when it is less than 2, then it makes sense that a pumped hydro storage systems can be effective at a particular geographical site. Now, next thing is uh, uh, to give more insight to a pumping uh, pumped hydro storage systems, we can have high head installations. Uh, in which we can have upper reservoir and uh, lower reservoir with have a steep slope. Other case can be a medium head installations, it can be uh, a horizontal open canal with a short pressure uh, pipe for towards this uh, powerhouse. So, these two things are uh, very if, uh, are mainly necessary to justify the requirement of a pumped hydro storage systems and most importantly topography of a geographical site is also important. Many a times pumped hydro storage systems can be also considered above ground or underground. So, above ground means that uh, uh, it is like lower reservoir if you will if your lower reservoir is on the surface. So, this upper reservoir will be above sur the surface at certain height. Now, other way we can say that beneath our ground we can create a lower reservoir because your once you go to a depth then we can create a underground reservoir where water can be stored and they can be easily accessible. So, uh, so that is uh, that is another way we can look at in uh, looking at the topography. Uh, now, there are some situations in the earth crust we can have a natural caverns, mines or underground cavities. So, those locations can be uh, effectively chosen to store our water. So, that is the idea the pump hydro systems that operates. Uh, another important part of this I have already mentioned that uh, excess energy supply uh, which is occurs when uh, the um, the pumped hydro systems operates in the motor generator uh, mode and during uh, during the storage phase the pumped hydro systems operate in a pump uh, uh, sorry if the pump hydro systems operate uh, during uh, during storage pump motor systems and during um, generation phase it operates in turbine and generation mode. So, which means that excess energy supplied by the primary plant um, during off peak hours can be used to drive a motor pump to, uh, to elevate water from lower to upper reservoir and during peak demands the system can reverse the turbine generator mode for producing the excess electricity. Now, there is a, uh, a method in which the efficiency or efficacy of this pump storage system is defined and this combined efficiency for pumped hydro systems we called it as turn around efficiency. So, basically there is a charging period and discharging period and it talks turn around efficiency talks about how much we have charged, but how much we have actually discharged. So, uh, taking into account the power produced during discharge phase and power produced during charging phase the turn around efficiency if it falls in the range of 60 to 62 to 68 percent, which is a quite reasonable number for any energy storage 
devices. But main uh, uh, issue is here that when you talk about storage, their energy densities are less. So, we cannot supply continuously for a long run. So, it is only used for peak demands. Now, we will move on to next segment of our discussion that is compressed air storage systems. When you say pumped hydro storage, it takes the advantage of hydrostatic pressure to increase the potential energy of water through its elevation. Now, the analogous mode in the compressed air storage is that energy is stored in the form of reservoir, aquifer or caverns. And this stored energy is released during the period of peak demands by expansion of air through an air turbine. So, essentially in a pumped hydro we require a hydro turbine, but in a uh, compressed air storage we require an air turbine and water is liquid phase and air is a gas phase. So, uh, in both the cases uh, we in, in the first case we are storing the water in a potential form, here also we are storing the uh, potential energy by compressing the air in a compressed form, air in a compressed form and there, but another additional feature that we have during this compression flow temperature of air also increases that part is gives an additional advantage. Now, looking at the storage, uh, compressed air storage systems can be of three types, one is salt caverns, aquifers or hard rock systems. Salt caverns are more stable compressed air systems, storage systems because of its loading for entire duration of the plant life. Aquifers are naturally occurring formation of porous rocks that has capability of air water interface movements. So, that pressure difference can be utilized uh, as a storage. Hard rock systems maintain the air pressure above its surface, but main difference is that it, this system is not stable when we have a large temperature fluctuations. So, however, our main intention of this comp compressed air st storage systems will be talking about salt cavern systems which is a more stable systems and uh, a uh, si simplicity in its operations. Now, how a compressed air storage systems in salt in a cavern mode looks like. So, what we have shown is this figure is a hybrid uh, mode, uh, mode of systems. Hybrid mode I mean when we compress the air both uh, pressure increases as well as the temperature increases which means we are storing its uh, the stored energy is in the form of pressure as well as thermal energy. So, that way it is a hybrid mode and the system is mostly adiabatic because we do not allow the, because we are taking out the heat from uh, the from this compressed air after its compression. So, and we are not allowing this heat to go out of this thing out of the system. Now, how it operates let us see this figure. So, what we see here is that a motor generator set Mg and it is coupled with a, a compressor one side and turbine other side and this turbine is nothing but your it is a air turbine. Okay. Now, what happens during off peak hours that means, when we have excess uh, that energy is uh, there is there is not much demand. So, what we do is you run this unit that is motor generator unit as a motor mode. So, when it runs as a motor mode it runs this compressor. So, during when it uh, when the compressor is um, starts running air gets sucked into this compressor from atmosphere. Now, once it comes uh, during this process of compression its pressure temperature increases. Now, when it enters now we are storing these things in a underground reservoir or reservoir R which is a which is called as air storage reservoir. Now, before entering this air reservoir we allow this uh, uh, compressed air to pass through a packed bed storage material. So, here we have some materials that can absorb the heat from this high temperature air. 
So, when by, by absorbing the heat, the heat is retained within this pack bed and uh, once it goes and during its uh, uh, during this charging phase, what happens? Energy we capture, thermal energy we capture through the pack bed and this uh, low temp I mean, uh, I mean what you say when this temperature drops uh, up to through this process your uh, pressure uh, does not change, but temperature drops. So, normal air is get stored in a reservoir we call this as a air storage reservoir and this can be underground as well or it can be kept in a balloon or uh, in some uh, cavities in an underground systems that is a possibility we call this as a cavern. Now, during discharge phase or during peak demand we allow this uh, mg set that is motor generator set to operate through turbine mode. So, it means that compressor mode is switched off and we side by side start the discharging mode. So, through this process the uh, air compressed air by virtue of its own pressure again passes through this packed bed. Now, during this passage of passes through the packed bed it absorbs uh, the heat which is stored inside this packed bed material and again its temperature also increases. Now, why we are, and when after that things oh, the high pressure and temperature air we try to expand in the turbine. Now, why do you require this uh, uh, thing is that we expect that during expansion force uh, expansion phase air should not condense. So, that is the idea that it should not condense and that means when the when you allow this air to enter into this turbine its temperature is reasonably high enough so that during its expansion phase it does not condense. So, through this and uh, the system operates. So, this is this is how uh, the system operates and which is a single stage adiabatic compressed air storage systems that operates during a charging phase and in a discharging phase. Now, typically since this system operates in adiabatic manner and we are talking about a very high pressure and temperature storage conventional system of uh, uh, talking about gamma Cp uh, value that they do change. So, for that case instead of assuming a isentropic systems we call this as a polytropic systems and it these polytropic systems operate in a adiabatic manner. Now, during the polytropic compression we can find out this temperature ratio that is T 2 by T 1 as pressure ratio raised to the power n minus 1 by n, n stands as index of compression. Then uh, to get the efficacy of the systems we also have to consider the storage capacity of the reservoir and we call this as a uh, and, and this has to be quantified as a storage efficiency and that storage efficiency operates in an adiabatic manner and we call this as a adiabatic storage. First thing, second thing the system is also a hybrid system because we talk about thermal as well as pressure energy which is tapped simultaneously during this compression phase. Now, if you look at a typical uh, workable model for an hybrid uh, uh, adiabatic systems uh, one can say that a cavern size or talks about the storage volume and first thing we need to quantify what should be this cavern volume and based on the cavern volume it will be the size of the packed bed thermal storage will be 10 percent of that val number volume. So, a typical situation uh, for a peak unit capacity of 1500 megawatt hour uh, a expected storage would be 20 lakh meter cube volume of storage capacity to store 10 bar pressure. So, which means that if you want to store a 10 bar pressure store air at 10 bar pressure to for a um, for uh, uh, producing 100 uh, 1500 megawatt hour energy then you require 
ट्वेंटी लैक्स मीटर क्यू स्टोरेज एरिया सो विच इज ए ह्यूज सो दिस इज नॉट ए फिजिबल ऑप्शन सो वॉट वी हैव टू लुक फॉर इज दैट वी हैव टू लुक फॉर ए हायर स्टोरेज सिस्टम मीडियम सो वी हैव टू स्टोर द एयर फॉर सेम कैपेसिटी एट हायर प्रेसर एंड सो दैट आवर वॉल्यूम रिड्यूस्ड और स्टोरेज कैपेसिटी रिड्यूस ड्रेस्टिकली सो ट्वेंटी लैक मीटर क्यू कम्स डाउन टू सिक्सटी फोर थाउजेंड मीटर क्यू विच मीन्स एट हायर प्रेसर द स्टोरेज वॉल्यूम इज लेस विच मीन्स दैट योर कॉस्ट ऑफ डेवलपिंग दिस सिस्टम विल बी लेस हेंस इट इज कंक्लूडेड दैट ए कंप्रेस्ड एयर स्टोरेज सिस्टम्स is becomes effective when we have high when we are when we are exploring high pressure storage system now additionally uh, what happens uh, there are techniques like we have already told about the single stage compression single stage expansion multi stage compression and multi stage expansions so one way you can think about instead of compressing it in a single stage we can think of multi stage uh, compressions so this is a case of three stage compressions and this is a three stage expansion in the turbine and everything so what we do is a air compressor and air turbine let us try to see that if there is any workable model which is available in a compressed air storage systems so the first compressed air storage systems was built and designed and built at brown brewery in 1978 so it's a hybrid gas turbine plant which is built at hernhof germany for a capacity of 290 megawatt now to cater this 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 is shown in this figure now to cater this need what the cavern requirement is uh, 3 lakh uh, storage volume storage volume capacity is close to 3 lakh meter cube and this is uh, this is created with a, uh, a by leach, in a leaching salt dome because normally we keep this uh, salt in these things because its density becomes higher and higher so in a leaching salt dome the air is stored to increase its density and this is stored in a, in a depth which is 650 to 800 mil below this ground it's not an on under water rather it's a under ground now in a now while this is what we do in a charging mode so in a storing mode compressor pumps the atmospheric air into car carbon and stores at 50 to 70 bar and in generation mode we don't operate at 50 bar we operate at a, a less pressure which at a reduced pressure to keep to maintain the pressure uh, constant pressure uh, in this uh, storage volume so it is as operated at lesser pressure 46 bar so this is a case uh, where atmospheric air is taken at 10 degree centigrade and it's a three stage compression and a three stage compression and two stage expansion so additionally we have uh, other units like uh, intercooler after cooler at various locations so this is just a this particular figure just to give you a feeling that such a compressed air storage system do exist and it is integrated it has to be of course it has to be integrated in any one of the power plants in fact uh, this particular unit is a hybrid uh, mode operates in a hybrid mode that is with a packed bed and it it is a gas turbine plant so uh, uh, other point is that for this particular unit it is the storage occurs for about 8 hours but generation occurs is done only for 2 hours so that thereby we maintain a constant pressure in that air storage reservoir so this is all about this compressed air storage systems which uh, uh, which is a, a 
very uh, fundamental requirement for any kind of power plant operations. And it falls as a renewable energy because we do not spend any extra cost for this developing the systems. So, we are just taking the excess amount and try to store it and this unit is all only gives the peak requirement of demand. Now, with our discussion today, we will try to solve a numerical problems which is a simple numerical problems uh, just to know the filling of the uh, quantitative numbers that we are talking about. So, this problem is about a compressed air storage unit and which is supposed to be designed and for a charging period of 7.5 hours. That means, we need to charge these things for 7.5 hours and initial temperature of air is 1 bar 20 degree centigrade, exit pressure is 100 bar, polytropic efficiency for compressor is 70 percent and that peaking turbine. Here you will not use word turbine, here we will use the word as a peaking turbine because it, it the turbine runs during the peak demand. So, we need to find out temperature of air after compression, uh, polytropic exp, uh, uh, exponent, storage volume and average uh, vol to air flow rate uh, during charging. Now, to the solve the problems, so let us, let us first understand what has data has been given, compressor efficiency of isentropic uh, or polytropic efficiency of compressor is 70 percent and peaking turbine efficiency is 60 percent and initial case P 1 is 1 bar and T 1 is 20 degree centigrade which is 293 Kelvin. P 2 stands as 100 bar. Now, with this number one can uh, try to find out if the had this base efficiency been a uh, adiabatic efficiency what I why I should what should I write is that taking this efficiency as adiabatic efficiency I can write the expression as H 2 S minus H 1 divided by H 2 minus H 1. Had this polytropic been an isentropic efficiency, the expression would have uh, isentropic enthalpy difference to the actual enthalpy difference. Since the working medium is air, so C p gets cancelled, so H becomes C p times T. So, this equation now reduced to T 2 s minus T 1 divided by T 2 minus T 1. Now, here and that value if you take this is 0 0.7. Now, here known condition is T 1 is known. Uh, now, T 2 s can be calculated by using isentropic relation T 2 s by T 1 is equal to P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, take gamma is equal to 1.4. Uh, P 1 and P 2 by P 1 is equal to uh, 100, T 1 is already known. So, this will represent, uh, this will talk, give you uh, T 2 s as uh, 1090 Kelvin or, or 817 degree centigrade. But T 2 s we do not require, we require T 2. So, from this equation we can say T 2 is equal to T 1 plus T 2 s minus T 1 divided by uh, this isentropic efficiency value uh, that is if you put the number it is 1159 degree centigrade or 1433 Kelvin. But uh, when you calculate this T 2, uh, this is based on the absence uh, temperature uh, with this uh, temperature after compression uh, by assuming this number, but uh, what polytropic efficiency would, would it would be. Now, for example, if you say T 2 is this, 
Now, if you take another uh, expression like polytropic expression uh, for this. So, we write p to the power p 1 to the power n minus 1 by n is equal to t 2 by t 1. So, this is polytropic uh, compression. So, the, the, if you use this expression and putting this value of p 2 by p 1 and t 2 and t 1, then this will give you this will be 1159 plus 273 divided by 293 which is t 2 by t 1 is equal to 100 to the power n minus 1 by n. So, by solving this we say n is equal to 1.53. So, we get the first two answers what is the temperature after compression? Temperature after compression is 1152 degree centigrade. Polytropic expansion, uh, polytropic compression is uh, index of uh, polytropic compression is 1.53. Now, next part is so this is A, this is B part, and C part we are trying to see what is the storage volume. Now, to find the storage volume, we need to use the equations which is called as equation of state which says P capital B is equal to M R T. So, in this equation we know pressure, we know temperature, we do not know mass, we also we also do not know volume. Now, to calculate this mass, first thing mass calculation we have to see that what is we have to look into the requirement for turbine. So, we say turbine uh, mode efficiency is 60 percent. So, we say that uh, and the W t is equal to 1500 megawatt hour and if you say turbine is 60 percent efficient then this thing implies your storage power should be 1500 divided by 0 0.6 that is 2500 megawatt hour. And this 2500 megawatt hour has to be stored through uh, heating. So, for that reason you can write uh, that m mass times specific heat into T 2 minus T 1 is equal to should be equal to P s. Now, here uh, uh, we are talking about pressure about 100 bar and this is this is close to about uh, expected temperature would be around 1200 degree centigrade. So, for this case we say C p variation of C p can be assumed to be 1050 joule per kg Kelvin. Now, uh, also in this situation we can also write R is equal to 284.75 joule per kg Kelvin. This data can be obtained from any of the conventional thermodynamics books. So, looking at this we have uh, we can say M can be calculated as P s divided by C p times T 2 minus T 1. So, P s is in megawatt hour. So, we have to convert it that is 2500 into 10 to the power 6 in the hour means it has to be in second. So, multiplied by 36600 C p as 1050 and T 2 minus T 1 is 1159 minus 20. So, this gives you the mass uh, of air requirement 7.5 into 10 to the power 6 kg. Now, once you know this mass then we can say what should be volume. So, volume can be represented as m r t by p. So, that is equal to 
into 10 to the power 6 r is 284.75 t stands as atmospheric air that is 293 uh, p is equal to uh, uh, 100 bar which is 10 to the power 7. So, all this thing converted into Pascal. So, considering this and uh, calculating this, we can say V would be 62575 meter cube. So, for this storage at this 100 bar, 1500 megawatt storage at 100 bar, we require a storage volume of 62575 meter cube. And last part of this analysis is that what is the average flow rate of air uh, into the cavern, so during charging. So, basically our charging period is 7.5 hours. So, average flow rate so we can say B average as 62 575 divided by 7.5. So, this turns are out to be 8343 meter cube per hour. Okay. So, this is all about uh, this problem which is based on this compressed air storage unit. So, with this I conclude this uh, lecture today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.